So now that we've talked about GPA, GRE, letters of rec, uh, personal statement, and some of the pieces connected to that, uh, it's time to talk a little bit more about some of the things that even before you're submitting applications that ideally you're doing in terms of your larger professional and academic development so that you uh, are preparing yourself to become a strong applicant when that time comes. Uh, so I will talk about these pieces in terms of the academic realm, the interpersonal realm, the cultural realm, the research realm, and the practice realm. And I've alluded to uh, stuff about the research realm and the practice realm a little bit in some of my comments about your letters of rec, talking about how you'd want one from someone who's seen your research side and one from your practice side, but I'll go into these pieces uh, more in depth. <clears throat> so uh, what is ideal is when folks are undergraduates in their freshman or sophomore year uh, and they know that they want to go to graduate school. That's, that's ideal, it's convenient, but the thing is many of us, myself included, oftentimes don't find out until our junior year, sometimes even our senior year, that, oh, I think I'd like to go into a PhD program for this or that reason. Um, okay, what do I need to do to be competitive? Oh, oh my, I've got to do all these things and get involved in all this stuff. Oh shoot, I've got to get started. Um, so, you know, it's ideal when you can start some of these preparations I'm going to describe earlier on in your career, but you know, that's not always how real life goes. And so you do what you can, what you're capable of doing based on the amount of time that you have in your circumstances. So to whatever degree you can implement this advice or this strategy that I'm going to describe, um, the better, but you know, you're going to have to make adjustments for real life and the limitations of your situation. So let's start by talking about the academic piece first. So in terms of the academic realm, there's a few things you want to make happen for yourself to make yourself a strong applicant. The first is that you get good grades in your classes. Now, this is the obvious answer, of course, but again, these good grades will lead to getting at least that 3.5 GPA that I mentioned uh, earlier, and ideally the minimum of 3.7 or a 3.8 GPA. Um, so doing well in the classes that you take on, including your non-psychology classes, because those contribute to your GPA as well, um, that can end up being very important. So ideally, uh, you've been able to, over the course of your undergraduate career, uh, keep your grades up as much as you can and, and do whatever it is that you need to do to set yourself up for success in those classes. So getting good grades in whatever you're taking is key. Another consideration is what classes that you take. Because chances are, if you want to go into a PhD in counseling psych, you probably had a bachelor's in psychology. Not everybody does, and you don't have to, but it just might mean that you might feel a little less prepared um, for graduate school or for some of the psychology-related principles if you don't have as much exposure to that as an undergrad. <clears throat> um, but to whatever degree you have control over this, you're probably going to take core psychology classes as a part of your undergraduate major, and then you're going to have some flexibility in terms of there are certain electives uh, you may be able to take or skip, and certain paths that you may follow or may not follow. And there are some classes that um, can help you in particular, and some that won't help as much. Um, I know when I was a bachelor student at University of Illinois, <clears throat> my approach was that I wanted to get my bachelor's degree with as little pain as possible. So I specifically tried to figure out what classes were quote unquote easier classes out of the ones that I knew I had to take to get to get the degree. It's kind of cynical in that way and a little naive. 
<clears throat> but that's a very, I think, common perspective that a lot of us have when we're in our younger years and we're like, you know, I've got other stuff to do and fun things to do. How can I minimize the amount of work I need to do to get my degree? Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, something that will help you is the more you can take advanced classes that are relevant to counseling psychology and psychology in general, the better set up you'll be to be a competitive applicant. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, there's a few kind of topics that it's good to have some background in. One thing that can make you look like a serious applicant is having taken more than the minimum number of stats classes. Um, we all as people kind of vary in how stats savvy or mathy we can be. Um, and to whatever degree you can, the more stats classes you can take and the more familiar with the basics of statistics you can become, uh, that will set yourself up for a smoother transition into graduate school and shows your seriousness about preparing for the research side of the degree. <clears throat> Similarly, if you can take research methods courses where you're learning how to conduct research, you're writing up your own paper or proposing your own study or running your own little study as a part of the class, that is excellent experience. And taking that class is the mark of a serious student. <clears throat> so that's research methods courses is another uh, thing I recommend. Uh, the third kind of special thing is because counseling psych, just like clinical psych, has this applied therapy-esque component to it. If your school offers classes in theories of counseling, I recommend taking that. If it offers classes in techniques of counseling, otherwise known as helping skills or listening skills or micro skills, um, those are excellent classes to take because they are very specific to counseling psych and learning to do therapy. And there's a number of, of advantages to taking those classes. First of all, when those are on your transcript, you can show your seriousness about uh, going in this uh, direction of counseling psychology. Uh, second of all, it will give you exposure to some pieces of what goes into therapy. And for many of us, we are not totally sure how much we'll like doing therapy or if we'd like doing therapy until we do it until we get some exposure. And, that it's, and that's just kind of a thing in life, right? There's a lot of activities like playing board games or sports or whatever, where you might have a sense of whether you'd enjoy a given thing, but sometimes you just don't know until you try it. And that can be the case with uh, learning to do, learning these basic skills that go into doing therapy. So taking these classes can help you test your own assumptions about whether doing therapy related stuff might be a good fit for you because you might find that you really kind of love this stuff and that can strengthen your resolve and your commitment and your confidence in going in this counseling psychology direction. But you might find that it sucks. You might find that it's like pulling teeth and it just doesn't seem to jive with your personality and your personal style. That happens for a fair bit of people. And the thing is, it's much better to learn that about yourself earlier on in the context of an undergrad class than to get into a master's or a PhD program and then figure out, oh, I actually don't like doing therapy. This isn't a good personal fit for me. Like that sucks. You're going to waste more of your life going that direction. So getting exposure <clears throat> to those kind of classes, uh, particularly the helping skills class where you're doing some of that stuff can be really useful in helping you shape your own career. <clears throat>